What Was a Monster was episode five, Revolution in a Teacup, uh, by James D. Harding. It's the it follows directly on from In Crimson, where Martin, uh, played by Kenny Boyle, has been kidnapped by the cult with many faces. Spoilers, but it's not my fault if you're watching this and haven't watched the episodes. Um, so we pick up right after as Maya's kind of chasing him down, chasing every lead, uh, while Norris and uh, Goody Two Shoe Pits agent Grace McKenzie, who we meet in this episode, uh, are just infuriated by Maya refusing to play by the rules and play by the book and she's going rogue and she's off to meet Lady McDermott who's an ancient vampire queen and she is given a name of uh, David Brannigan who's a, a werewolf uh, activist um, and it's about how that kind of plays out and it's also about uh, Alexis who we've kind of been following since the start she's like in A202 um, and we see more of her in this episode where she's visited by Zoe who is her um, vampire sister and that's what uh, episode 5 is all about it's all very exciting it's all very ah everything's going on and action <laughs> Promise me, if we ever get married, we use traditional vows. Oh, well, I'll have you know that if I wrote my own vows, they'd be absolutely fantastic. <laughs> James Harding, uh, James T. Harding, sorry, he'll slap me for that. Um, he wrote this episode. Um, James came on board um, uh, this year to script edit originally. Um, but James also has aspirations to be a writer, so I asked him if he'd go up for writing an episode. And once we had kind of blocked out the treatment and the Bible was showing what each episode was going to be, uh, there, was an, there was a gap of an episode that we didn't have a writer for. So James very kindly stepped in and he, he wrote the episode. Um, great to work with, uh, quite critical of himself, which is fine. Um, he, he did a great job, he handed it in quickly, he kind of expanded on the world, he had a lot to do. He had to introduce Sophie's character, he had to introduce Rachel's character, uh, James's character and uh, Vi's character while also giving everyone else stuff to do. So considering it's a 24 minute episode, he definitely managed to pack everything in. I met the showrunner Fraser Cool on Twitter and offered to have a look at the scripts for upcoming episodes for him. He liked the notes that I gave him enough to hire me as a script editor for the rest of the show. And then a few episodes later, he said, James, would you like to write an episode of Cops and Monsters? And here we are. Fraser encouraged me to write the script without worrying too much about the budget. So I put in loads of different locations, loads of actors, crowd scenes, special effects, even a fight scene, thinking that I would have to remove them in subsequent drafts of the script. But then Fraser called my bluff by scheduling almost everything that I'd asked for. So I think the resulting episode is a lot more um, bells and whistlesy than you might normally get from a web series because of that. Another interesting change that happened between drafts was that I added the flashback scene between Martin and Maya, um, where we get to see them as a couple before they break up and join the pits and are forced back together again. And um, I added this after showing a draft of the script to my friend Grace Knight, who's also a writer, and she was worried that Maya was coming across as a little um, mad. She's so determined to rescue Martin at the expense of almost everything else. And I think this scene answers the question of why that should be the case. And it was really nice to give Martin something to do that wasn't just being a victim in the corner while the cult screams at him. And it was really nice to give uh, Maya something to do where she gets to show her vulnerable side. Guest stars for episode five were incredible. We have Rachel Teat, who plays Grace, who we've wanted to work with since we started the show. Uh, Rachel was in Wolf Blood, uh, and when we saw her, we were like, she's incredible, we have to have her. Um, so we finally got um, Rachel, we finally got funding enough to bring Rachel up to fill her scenes. Uh, we also got James Payton, who is in Captain America. He played Hitler uh, in the first Captain America film, and he plays Frank Longbottom in Harry Potter, which was very exciting. Uh, he plays David Brannigan, the werewolf activist, uh, with his Welsh, non Welsh accent. Uh, we also have uh, Vary Calvary, who was in Braveheart and who worked on a pilot of mine a few years ago. Uh, she plays Zoe, who is um, Alexis's twin, non-twin sister. Uh, and we've also got Sophie Aldred, who was Ace back in the 1980s Doctor Who, uh, my favourite ever Doctor Who companion. So it was it was a thrill to work with Sophie. She was just brilliant. She was just mad, but really mad. Rude. Uh, 
speed. Thank you. Great speed. Mark it. That's you, Emma. Scene one, slate 33, take one. Thank you. Out, out that way. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh. Careful. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, 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 you're no, fine. No, no, just get out of shot. It's fine. <laughs> Not trying to be rude. Okay, and... Hold on, hold on. Set. Action. Okay, okay cut. Thanks so much. Yeah. So Lindsay. Hi. How's the day been going for you so far? Very, very well, and it's dry. Which is a miracle. And how does it feel to be back on a Silly Wee Films production? It feels amazing, like I never left. To be honest, it's only been, what, six years? Six years? Yeah, six, six years. Yeah. It feels like it's only been about six weeks, eh? <laughs> Hello, my name is Lindsay Dowell, and I am producer on set for Cops and Monsters. And I work for a company, or actually run a company, called Goldray Productions with my business partner, Gavin. Goldray Productions was started in 2004. I think, or 2005. Um, it's a small uh, production company that Gavin and I run together and we just pick up various projects. We both work on uh, full-time on other things um, and we pick up projects, um, various things from producing um, theatre companies to um, things like this, web series, movies, uh, music videos. We've had to write pantomime before and also star in it, which was, uh, yeah, um, uh, so it's really just whatever comes in, we're happy to, to take it on and, uh, and see where it goes, so it's good. I worked with Fraser before, um, we did a movie a few years, six years ago now, um, we worked together um, and with Gavin and uh, basically we just decided to put the band back together for Pops and Monsters. Um, I haven't been involved from the start um, but I have been watching it very closely and uh, Fraser asked me to come back and I said yes. Just making sure that the schedule ran as smoothly as possible. These things always kind of run a bit erratically sometimes, but we try to keep as close to the times as possible. Um, unfortunately, Fraser and I are gigglers, so we do a lot of laughing on set, uh, but we, we remain very professional. Um, and basically just making sure all the actors are happy um, and everyone's taken care of, the crew are fed and watered, and um, as I say, everyone's just doing their job and being happy about it and it's really raining right now. Thank you very much for everyone that supported us and please do continue to support um, and share it out because uh, everybody should be watching this web series. It's new, it's innovative, it's current, it's relevant and you know within the market um, and it's really really professionally done and enjoyable. That first run through, when you see the script being done for the first time in costume, in character, on the set, um, and the camera's quite far back from the action because they're doing a master shot, but they've got all the um, smoke and lights and so on going on. It's pretty magical because it's exactly how you imagined it would be when you were writing the script. And yeah, it's, it's almost a strange feeling having something being taken from your brain and put into reality. But then, of course, they film the scene again from a different angle, and then again from another different angle. They do it about 15 times, and every time they do a take, you think, oh, I could have changed that word, it would have been a bit better. Or, oh, you know, I wonder if the character's motivation is as compelling as it might be. And then by the time it's actually in the can, you fucking hate it, and you never want to see it again. Good. Well, thank you, all of you who stayed up late with me last night to, uh... Professor Carmichael, in a way, do the same for you. The SCSI report has arrived, and it looks like we'll be doing some good old fashioned police work for a change. So today is all about the. Norris Fletcher is a guy who's probably had a very good police career so far, but something's gone wrong and he has been booted into this, this department that he really doesn't want anything to do with. So as a result, he's sort of, he's sort of I think, declining. Generally kind of angry as well, um, and put in a bad, bad position PR-wise, and without giving too much away as well. He's becoming sort of embarrassed again, uh, but this time in public. 
No, honestly, um, it's great fun as usual. You know, I, I like working with Fraser. I've worked with Fraser on, I think, 19, 20 other projects now as well, which I think is a record. Uh, anyone else? Uh, and the cast's get better and better. Love working with the, with, the, with the guys today. Really, really, really good good people in uh, for this. And obviously, I'm a, 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 a boss. Um, and I like playing the character as well. It's good fun. Uh, it's always a nice, easy shoot as well. Fraser shoots quick, which I like, because I've got a very low attention span. Probably. Um, but I really enjoy it. Always enjoy the shoots. Always nice and quick. Um, and we get what we want because we know what we want before. There's a good shorthand that we have that we work together quite a lot with as well. Um, you know, the direction which is lacking usually from, from Fraser is just be better, you know, which helps. You know, stop being ish, which also helps as well. Not a lot of variation in there, but nice, you know, nice. But at least Chris Bain wasn't here today, so that makes, that makes up for a lot. I think very crowdfunding and, and, and sort of trying to raise money online, there's a lot of them. And it's very difficult to pick the wheat from the chaff sometimes as well and support. You can't just generally support everything. So I think you've got to come up with good cast, good ideas. You've got to create a world for it. And I think a lot of it depends on things like the poster you get, the, the, the sort of artwork, the ideas you've got and the enthusiasm. Everyone's enthusiastic, enthusiastic about trying to raise money. But what are you going to get at the end of it? What are the perks? You know, are you actually going to appear in this thing as well if you fancy it? A lot of them used to be just credits. Now I think more and more people want to actually appear in things that actually have something to do. Names are used in this, which I find genius. I'm, I, I keep, I've keep, i got a roll call. Without giving anything away, I've got a roll call of names. And it's people I know, it's people I've invested, it's people I've worked with and everything as well. So it's, 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 it's nice little sort of add-ons that is some sort of reward for giving your hard-earned cash to it. But it makes a tremendous difference. So no, it's, it's obviously very important um, to keep doing it, please. Um, but, but obviously you can't, it's not a never ending well, and I think the project has to be good. I think that's the most important thing. I've yet to find one that's good. So in the, in, 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 you know, in the absence of a good one, why not just put some money on this one? When you're writing for an ongoing production, you know who the actors are going to be who are playing the parts, and you know how they play those characters most of the time. It's a bit like you're hand making a Christmas present for somebody. And then when you visit the set, you get to see them unwrap it for the first time and start playing with it. And if you've done your job right, which I hope I did, um, they're delighted. And that comes across in the final episode. So professional. This is show business. You can be replaced, Marty. Please feel how the game's going to be played. Lovely producers have provided a gorgeous young virgin for you. Virgins are very expensive, Marty. This is show business! I'm looking for a video. I'm going to let you grab the stars on your own, would you? Hi, Matt. Uh, hello. Um, I'm James Payson, and I'm playing uh, David Brannigan. Uh, he is the, uh, the leader of the, the werewolves. Uh, you know, there's a revolution. He's the fellow. He's the, um, he's the guy. He's the, he runs a bar. And that's where all the, all the werewolves go. And, uh, he, knows, he knows what's going on, but he doesn't like to let that information out to the uh, various parties. I'm a great believer in, in supporting local filmmakers wherever they may be and, and helping give this bit back, doing something not just for the fun of it, but to create something good and hey, the actors want to work, which is the, which is the main thing. And I want to work with people who are enthusiastic. And Fraser and his team are enthusiastic, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> uh, my day involves uh, some huge overacting, obviously. Um, Seen in my other work. Um, uh, behind a bar, uh, serving to the, to the other actors, and uh, scenes, scenes involving being a little bit drunk, and then it all kicking off and going a little bit west. I think it's brilliant that you know, people have an idea of what kind of movies they want to see, what kind of shows they want to see, and that the kind of thing is available via crowdfunding instead of via a studio or via a channel, then I think that's got to be a positive thing. It has to be. Um, it's great, you know, people like getting to choose what kind of thing that they support rather than being forced fed by, by a company. We also filmed in St Andrews in the Square, which doubled as our church, uh, where 
Alexis and Lady McDermott have it out. Um, they were brilliant. It was it's just a cool venue, and they're just yeah, yeah come in and film. We're not we're we're, we're here to whenever. Uh, so we had a great time uh, working all that out, and we got we kind of used that for the scenes with Zoe and Alexis as well. And it's just a really nice, cool hall, uh, and hopefully we can we can go back there sometime. In order, that's no, 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 that's absolutely fine. Uh, I just need my art department person and the makeup person. Yeah, yeah. in fact, the picture's still falling out. Yeah. Will you stand by art department, please? Carter Ferguson is our stunt director. I've known Carter for years and years and years now. Um, and Carter kindly agreed to come on. Uh, he's been he's worked on a couple of episodes now, uh, and he just makes sure that everything's done safe. Uh, knowing that there was going to be a vampire werewolf fight with Sophie and Ennis uh, in St Andrews in the Square, I just really wanted to make sure that that was safe. So Carter came in and he, he blocked it all out with me and Julie, Sophie and Ennis, and we, we made sure that the fight looked good uh, and everything was safe because there was a lot of running about upstairs in the church um, and lots of Sophie falling down on pew wooden pews. So uh, Carter, Carter was brilliant, he, he does his job very well, he's very efficient, he's a good laugh and I think he secretly loved working with Sophie because like me he's a big Sylvester McCoy fan but shh, don't tell anyone. I'm Ennis Anderson and I play Alexis, a werewolf. Well I met a lot of the characters in the show that Alexis actually grew up with, with the cult, Billy, I met for the first time which was great, he's really funny. Um, and Mari, my sister, plays Zoe which is really exciting as well. Um, yeah, that's what's different. I think she's kind of finding herself more, that sounds really kind of vague, but uh, I'm finding her, certainly. Um, it's, it's interesting meeting all of these different peoples and figuring out her relationships and finding out little secrets about her that I didn't even know. I'm finding that kind of interesting as well. So far today, I filmed the last scene of the episode this morning with Billy and Martin um, with Kenny. And then I sat around for a wee while and observed and watched people doing their thing. And then now we're here in um, this churchy place, which is awesome, it's beautiful. And we're about to start filming, which is exciting. Well, a supernatural, anything supernatural is awesome. Um, I've never played a werewolf before. My natural go-to would be vampire because I'm a redhead. I'm kind of digging that I'm a werewolf this time, which is awesome. Um, really like um, the indie scene. I find it really interesting, and I love creating work within Scotland. I think it's really important for actors and um, production team to be able to find work in their home country. Yeah, I think crowdfunding is vital because it also gives an opportunity for the audience to be involved in the creation. There's uh, like perks and bits and bobs. I feel like it creates more of a community rather than something that you're distanced from. You're watching the actors and the production team putting something together, you're contributing towards it. It's like a communal creation, if you will. <laughs> Thank you so much for sending us lovely pennies for, and helping us to create this, because it's really good fun and I think it's really important. And please keep doing it. Now Alexis, don't get away from me! Zoe. Uh, Zoe is a vampire and she's the sister to Alexis, who's playing a werewolf. I first got involved with Cops and Monsters um, because I worked with Fraser on Modline and we filmed that a couple of years um, ago. It was one of my first jobs out of drama school. And then um, when he started doing this project, he came to me and sent me the script and I loved it. So I really wanted to get involved with it because I love fantasy as well. So I had everything I looked for in a project. 
I like that it's different from, well, most vampire characters are just vampires and there's something quite evil about them. I really love that she actually doesn't want to be a vampire, that she's doing her best not to be, so I love that there's this kind of fight, fight going on in her own head with um, what she actually is truly and how she actually wants to be. I just really love anything that's to do with fantasy and I love that this is so different because it's bringing so many elements of fantasy into one series which is something that's not really been done before and I also love the fact that it's a Scottish series as well which I think is really different because I think there's so much more of that that can come from Scotland. Um, I think crowdfunding is really important just because it gets members of the public to actually get involved with independent talent in the country and I think that kind of will start making more opportunities for people in the creative arts, especially in Scotland. But it, And it also kind of means that other people can get involved as well, so it opens doors out to a lot more people. Just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has supported Cops and Monsters so far. Please keep supporting us and watching the show. In the final episode you'll see um, Alexis slap um, Lady McDermott in the face once, but she actually did that maybe 25 times on the day. It's quite a physically demanding thing to do for both of them. So I have massive respect for both Innes and Sophie for being able to do that. My name is Sophie Aldridge and I have the great pleasure of playing the 1,124 year old vampire queen, Lady Audrey McDermott in Cops and Monsters. I first heard of Cops and Monsters via Sarah Jane Madigan and she got some photographs of herself as a vampire at one of these conventions that I go to and she told me a little bit about it and then ages later uh, my agent had a call from Fraser and uh, so it kind of it was percolating there in the back of my brain so I knew what it was and uh, I could not resist the chance of playing the vampire queen. Who could, hey? Today I've been ooh, doing all sorts of things. I've been um, biting the neck of a young man, which was uh, very good, and that was the first thing I did. Um, then having a cup of tea, or was it tea, with the cult, and then um, having more tea, lots of tea going on in Lady Audrey's career. I think crowdfunding is such a brilliant idea because it's so democratic, and also as somebody who would make the show, you get to have complete control over it. Uh, you don't have to go through a commissioning process. You can really pick and choose who you want to be involved in the project. And it's also all funded by people who really want to see the show. So it's just a win-win situation and I love it, it's a great idea. What I like about this Cops and Monsters project is that it's made by people who are passionate about filmmaking and who can't really uh, fund, can't fund themselves uh, through a film or whatever. It's really, really, really hard. I don't think people realise how hard it is to get a project like this off the ground. Um, through conventional means. And that's what I really love about it, that there's a group of people who've got together, they've had a good idea, and they're all making it, getting experience, um, and having a really good time as well. So I probably look as though I'm at death's door, but never fear, it's makeup. And that's another thing I love about projects like this, that you get to play all sorts of different parts that you would not normally play. And this character is great fun. I love playing Lady McDermott. She's, uh, she's a seemingly innocent old lady, but really there's secrets to her. Thank you, thank you to everybody who's supporting Cops and Monsters, because without you, let's face it, we couldn't get to do all this. exist without your support and I don't just mean financial support although that is vital the fact that I know people actually want us to make this is incredibly motivating and terrifying so this is my big thank you to everyone 
that's contributed to Cops and Monsters, be that through lending time and skills to making it happen, to buying perks from the crowdfunding campaign, watching the episodes and sharing them on social media. Every little bit helps and it makes Cops and Monsters the show that it is. What happens next? Ha ha ha, I can't tell you. Uh, episode six, technically, Fight the Bite by Laura Anderson. We'll put, again, we'll pick up directly um, from from this episode. Um, there's a 24 hour ticking clock now on Martin, whether or not he will feed it from his virgin that he's been provided by the cult. So it's quite nice of the cult to give him food. Uh, and if he eats, he'll become a vampire. If he doesn't, he'll die. Um, unless um, Maya can get to him in time. So we can't, we can't carry on that theme uh, and we introduce uh, Alicia Shoes who is a vampire PR specialist who kind of ruffles the feathers in the group um, and yeah it's, it's going to be a great episode once it's finished.